but to keep this very short, Galway are definitely going to win. There's a lot of lads down the hospital that'll be getting statues before me, so there is. Described as a, as a blessing that thought he was Mr. Strange, kind of blessing Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> that national narrative, when it does my head in, that's we're reliant on Joe Canning, like, oh my god. Turkey Burke was in full forward, causing all sorts of problems, then they were able to bring Badger on for Turkey. Some might say he did a good job on Conor Whedon. I would say, from my point of view, that he spent half the day assaulting him. Well, the sun is shining, um, the weather is sweet, but if there's, if there's anything that'll dampen the mood, it's a, it's a Galway trip, a Galway heading to Thurles for a, a, an early afternoon key, a throw in on Saturday. Um, Patrick, in fairness to you, you reminded me that our record isn't as bad as I, as I have perceived. I suppose a, a childhood of nightmarish memories down in Thurles probably hasn't helped, and I'm still kind of uh, still feeling the brunt of it. But uh, I suppose before we go into the senior, look, I might, I might run through, uh, since we have been last on, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been last on, and we've had a bit of a success at minor and under 20 so we better we better give the the lads their due as well at the same time um so we start on the minor history created four in a row um it was amazing achievements like not just for you know not just for this particular panel but for you know the groups that have come before them and the managements that have come before them as well um what are your your thoughts on the final or thoughts on the year overall for in terms of the minor you would have, i think you're at the limerick game you weren't at the final at the left Limerick game, I was very impressed with, with, with them that night, considering you know where they were coming in from. Obviously, having not played together or not played a competitive match with anyone outside of their own camp, like you know, um, it's hardly ideal, but <coughs> you can certainly see the huge potential within the group that 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 made. And I was probably expecting a bigger jump in terms of performance from one week to the next. But equally, you know, you've taken to account you're playing, you are playing a fairly a decent Kenny team, um, and things hardly went their way with regards to the rub of the green and, and whatnot. I mean, the last some of the decisions of the last quarter were a bit baffling to say the least now, but that made it all the sweeter for a finish. And you know, in fairness to them, like, you know, when things were going against them in the last quarter, it, it would have been easy to get turned over and fall a couple of points by him, but they always they always stayed in around level or a point or two up and then once the goal went in, of course, late on the Collins' goal, that was that, that that was game over. But that was it was Plenty of shouting and bring your on in our house and that went in and out. <laughs> as, as you know yourself, you, you can never bake any often enough. So, um, no, it's a sweet one. And I mean, it's not, it's a brilliant achievement. It's not, it's not, it doesn't equate to a senior four in a row or anything like that in terms of, I mean, it's different, different playing personnel every year. So it doesn't affect that, that group in, 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 in many ways, you know. But it shows that there's a lot being done right up to that age, anyhow, whether or not we can, you know. You need to, I mean, the would say the, the first that four in a row team is that's that's what where we're at with the twenties now this year, um. So it's kind of these next four years now that you really want to see the success coming at that level and the hopefully a few a few, a few all Irelands to, to come come at that. But no, a team with a lot of potential, um, a fairly a big and quite a big team like in fairness and you know I obviously down again like I said down down in this for the All Ireland semi final against Limerick, and. They were probably they were the smaller of the two teams that night, but Limerick were there was, was a very very big Limerick team. There was a lot of physicality in, in that Galway team, like you know, um, look, looking at looking at the full back line and the likes of Greg Thomas in in, in attack, um, you know, there's a lot of size there and a lot of scope for improvement. And a lot of lads that are there in, in their second year, and equally a few that are going to be there again now this year. Um, so no overall look it was brilliant to win it. Um, huge credit to Brian Henley and, and, and his team for you know what must have been a very very difficult year with that group <coughs> and with the group that are coming up next and managing the two of them and I mean like you know they were they were going from Cusy Park on Friday night out with the other minor team the next day and I'm sure they had to go straight back into it again with, with, with this year's minor team even after the window that than last week so huge credit to them for how they've run it um, and you know they've, they've obviously they've reaped the the reward for finish with the, with another All Ireland so no, it was a, a great day's work now in fairness and I'm um, sure you, you you were down at it yourself. So what was that what was the, the sideline view? Yeah, no, it was fantastic. Like, you know, you couldn't you couldn't script the start no more than last night, you know, just absolutely blue clue Kilkenny away in the early stages, but Jesus there no matter what 
team that takes the black and amber or you know they they are puts on the black and amber they're never bet like you literally just have to keep yeah. going and going and going until the final whistle which was which was a pleasing point of view because it like if you were if you actually just went to blue kikini away by 15 points you know you don't learn a whole lot other than you've got a really good team like whereas they were actually forced to dog this one out you know that the fact that they dogged it out and won it and um you know probably made it even a bit sweeter and uh you know, I, I suppose there is going to be a high player turnover this year. It's next year, I think, from the starting lineup, I think it's only Dara Walsh that's 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 underage next year. So we're going to mm. you're going to have a, essentially a, a practically entire new team um, for the 2021 minor championship, which probably makes it even, as you said, would have made it would have made it even harder for Brian Henley and Co. Um, just in terms of you, you mentioned the goal there, like, geez, what what a brave decision to to, to go up or like from uh, from uh, Darren Shaughnessy, like it's just. You know, I was I was I was up in the press box, and there's a few lads beside me. We won't mention names now, and they were definitely roaring, scream, tap it over, tap it over, and just 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 uh, just get the, the get the crucial score. But no, just to have you know the, the kind of you know composure and wherewithal to kind of to, to spot that there's a bit of an opening here now, um, and and to actually deliver the deliver the pass like that, and you know. Young Collins, you know, he was, I think he was crowned minor hurler of the year last, last, not yesterday at some point as well, um, officially. So, you know, if there was probably one man you wanted on the end of it from that team, it was, it was likely to be him. And, you know, first time back there to the net, like, you know, just great bit of composure and skill and, you know, just a huge score and, and fully deserved, I think, you know, because, you know, this team have put in, you know, a long haul and we've, we've heard about them. They've had more adversity than other teams because they had no game for 18 months as well you know it was every you know the other teams coming in had provincial championships and they got a bit of games these lads had to you know keep keep the heads down keep you know, training amongst themselves had lockdowns to contend with some some lads were doing the leave and search um you know there, there was all there was all these things on um happening but definitely you'd you'd be hoping now that you know a good chunk of these lads will be you know making making their mark in under 20 over the next few years and you know maybe probably what maybe few of them then stepping onto the senior ranks as well because if you, if you can get maybe two or three anyway lads that eventually play senior you'd be happy enough and in fairness I was checking to a good few of the, the players afterwards and they seemed like a really kind of grounded and solid bunch a few of them were even telling me that the, you know they were already looking forward to the under 20 championship and you know this was only seconds after after winning all Ireland title and the and the goal was to play for senior for Galway which was uh, which was which was heartening to hear anyway if, if nothing else um, I suppose just from, from another point of view, the one one finally before we move on, I suppose, what an achievement from Shea Morgan. Um, you know, three All Ireland minor, uh, All Ireland medals. Um, he didn't play. I, I understand it'll be the first of his three years. He did. He didn't see action at all. But you know, of the following year, he was thrown in full forward. Um, you know, picked up a nasty looking injury in the semi final win over Wexford. Um, mm. you know. Um, he would, I'd say, he class himself, and I think even in that game of Wexford, he went back at centre back when Ian McGlynn was sent off. So yeah. to see him back at corner back this year was kind of a an interesting one because we we probably would have assumed he would have been more centrally on the basis of that, but it probably just shows the quality that we have in the ranks that you know no the, not no one's disregarding the corner back they're just as important as anyone else but you press by the scene him more centrally but it probably just highlights the quality you have and you know what a phenomenal achievement like it puts him in you know very very elite company and esteem and you know th- there's not much more you can say now it's. It's a case of probably pushing on for, for under twenty, and sure, on that we'll we'll just quickly <laughs> fast forward to last night. Um, you said you, you yourself you were training, you missed the first quarter. Well, lucky for you because you 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 missed probably the best part of the game. Really, you know the again, blue Kikini away thirty point lead at half time, and uh, still Kikini back in it again. Um, came roared back into it, and go away. In fairness, were you know at times were hanging on. Petty Rabbit was called in to make a. a a save. I know there was a there was a block on the line from a close range free from the keep the Kilkenny goalkeeper. You know, Galway Galway were under pressure down the home stretch as well, weren't they, Patrick? Oh, I actually certainly it was a lot a lot more hairy than than, than it should have been, you know, put it that way. I mean like no more than similar to Limerick and Tip, I guess, in the Muscle final that you just couldn't have seen foreseen the turnaround that was gonna come in the second half. And like the turnaround this game, it wasn't as dramatic or as sudden. It was kind of the case for Kilkenny kind of creeping their way back into it. Um, without totally dominating the game at all by any means because I thought defensively we hurled we heard very well and our backs continued to hurl well even in the second half and I mean the, the final score they conceded is, is, is not you know if you're going out and you're conceding 
around that 113, 114 mark every day, you're probably you're happy, you're happy enough as a, as a back six, like you know. But it was further up the way that, that the problems were. Um, and equally, you know, in fairness, you know, the quality of the ball coming in probably wasn't to the to the, the standard that it was in the first half, but that was down to Kenny kind of getting the right together and actually tearing into it a bit, a bit more than they had in the open half. But um, you said you would have expected more ball to be won and held up in, in, in the attack and, you know, some of the score they created in the first half were brilliant, like in some of the, the short pass and equally the direct ball they were they were playing in and forwards out miles from their men and winning it and turning and having a go. That was kind of it was living in the second half. Like, you know, it was really backs against the wall sort of stuff. Trying just trying to hold out, trying to survive to the sixtieth minute and like so you were yeah, you were you, you were glad I wasn't the seventy minute match on now, put it put it that way, you know. That's for sure. Yeah. Well I suppose it was. You mentioned the defensively and I'd agree with you yeah. entirely. I thought the defence Hurled well, um, you know, throughout the game, you know, for 70 minutes, it was probably, you know, I thought Owen Lawless was very good. Um, Owen Garrity, fullback, I think he, he impressed maybe Shane Quirk, Sean Neary, Evan Duggan, Christy Brown. Like, there was none of them that had a bad game. I suppose maybe a turning point might be, you know, I thought Ian McGlynn got through a power of work in the first half. And I, I, I know I know he went off probably with an injury. I think it was um, Jeffrey Linsky said it was shin splints at the, at the end. And, you know, he was coming. He was working back from. You know, uh, you know, probably he's probably trying to deal with an injury. And his replacement, Ellis Kinnear, was you know coming back from injury as well. No more than Ushin Fenery, the the Thomas's attacker as well. So they they only probably didn't have full games in them. But uh, maybe the change is kind of you know uh, hampered Galway a small bit. Um, but there's probably you know you're still getting outscored one ten to five points. You know, regardless. You know, so it's. It's it like scored five points in thirty minutes of hurling won't be enough to win you and all Ireland if that's the if that's the case. But I, I, I suppose in one sense it's probably a good thing for management because if they if they blew Kilkenny away by twenty points, that you know it's all you're hearing all you're hearing is praise, praise, praise ahead of Dublin. Whereas now you have you know have a bit of, you have a bit of a stick to beat the players with for the next week anyway. You know, I know you won't get much done, but you know, the mind should be sharp. And if there's one game, you know, now in, for these, for the bunch of these players, it's probably be Dublin in the final after what happened, you know, in the 2020, but 2020 decider that, you know, the, the magic complacency should not be an issue in this and it certainly won't be taking Dublin for granted. Um, just in terms of something that I just noticed last night, and maybe you'll tell me I'm completely off here, but just I, I find it in uh, under 20 games in in Leinster, and Tullamore more in particular. Now, I don't know why, but we find it very hard to get a bit of a rub of the green from officials. Um, I just got, just on last night's game alone, I think we were we awarded two frees in the second half. There's a few challenges that definitely warrant a freeze. I think we were awarded no scoreable free. I know we had a bit of an advantage and maybe referee probably said, you know, I mean, God, God we are probably going to run out comfortably as it is. But next thing, the game turned and there's suddenly a, a, a thing. Is that, is, am I completely off here? You know, I, I don't like having a crack, you know, referees and officials. But, you know, I just find the fine since this Leicester Championship, we find it hard enough to, you know, to get a free, you know, a 50-50 call normally seems to go against us for the most part. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't say I, I, it didn't stick out to me the same way it did in the in the minor final, I'll put it that way. Um, mm. But I think when when the tide is against you like that too, it, it can often feel like those decisions are going against you because equally you're you're having to defend more in, in any case. Like, you know, you're going to have more Kenny lads running at you than vice versa. Galway lads doing the same at the other end. Um, yeah, there was, there was a couple of decisions, all right, that, that probably should have been awarded as freeze. But equally, it didn't, it didn't, it, I, I didn't think there was a flood or a freeze for Kenny down the other end, you know. Um, I thought the ones that the ones that they got were 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 deserved, but well earned. So, um, for me, it wasn't a huge issue, now, all right. Um, but as you say, yeah, there's, there's always a few a few a few that, that, that tend to go against you. But I think it was more so the pattern of the game that probably heightened it. You know, and the fact that Galway didn't get scoreable the freeze is probably more down more down to the fact that Forrest couldn't win the ball for half an hour than than anything else. From, from my eyes anyhow, you know, it was, it was just it was it was going coming back out as fast as it was going in. And equally we were fortunate enough to think that Kenny still hit hitting off the ball away in the second half, you know, and had the use a bit a bit better um than they did, you know, we could be talking about a different story here here today. But um no, I think I think it was just, I think it was myself, I think it was more of a case of just the forwards just losing losing their battle sound, to be honest. Um yeah, there was a couple couple as I said that they, they probably they probably should have got her right, but I mean, you you, you pick, look look at the attack, and you you couldn't 
they couldn't pick out too many of them that won their individual battles in the second half. And, I mean, the, the Russian Fennery came off, John Cooney came off, um, Sean McDonald came off as well for a finish. Like, you know, it was the forwards that were being replaced there last night, not, not, not the backs. And equally, probably would have liked to see a small bit more of an impact from the bench. Paddy Cummins was playing very well in fairness to him. Um, that was a good move and a lovely ball up the line by, by Conor Flaherty from a free and he, he won it out well and like we'd seen in the first half we didn't see any of it really in the second half far, far the likes of that um, and I mean it's probably, it was interesting I thought as well to see the likes of you know Conor Flaherty Adam Brett fellas that started three weeks ago on last year's team and they're not able to make it this year um, you know, I thought that was a, a case of reverting back to type to some degree with Neary going back at six Comes up at wing forward, um, and you know, based on what we saw last night, it's certainly near a six works a lot, works a lot better anyhow than the, the sort of hard work and half hour role. So, no, I think as you say, a lot, lots of areas to work on, but a decent start all the same. And you know, you'd be hoping that they, they do take a step forward from here to the to next week to the, the Dublin game. And if they do that, I mean, they're going to play a decent Dublin team <laughs> again, again this time because you know it was in an Ireland semi final they played in, in, in the minor that, that, that time three years ago, I think it was. Um, so you know, it's going to be no, no push over there again. So, um, yeah, they're on the road, but they're certainly they're not nailed down in Ireland when you put it that way. No, that's for sure because Munster looks pretty decently strong as well, to be fair, like you know, yeah. so there, there is that, like the Limerick seem to be you know, coming force Cork, you know, they're. You know, they've plenty of plenty of success at under twenty. I know they they finally won the All Ireland, but they they've had good teams over the last few years at under twenty as well. Um, so look at, we'll move on to the the main the main the main show from the weekend, and you know, probably a, an era defining game really in a lot of sense for for, for Shane O'Neill and, and company. Um, just kind of going through back through the teams there from the twenty seventeen final, having them the notes in front of you. Um, before we kind of move on to anything, else, I suppose a lot of always key personnel are. Are still involved where there's probably been a much higher turn of player turnover in Waterford. Um that of that of you know like the likes of Stephen O'Keefe, Noel Connors, Barry Coughlin, uh Horik Mahoney, Dara Fives, you know, Brick Walsh, um a lot of lads, you know, that have have kind of stepped away, you know, in you know, or for, for one reason or another, are just aren't, aren't available at the moment. Tied to work, there's another one, you know, that uh that wasn't that, that wasn't listed there, you know what I mean? So, but um, it's it's you know it's it, it was gone. We are still you know it's still you get down to it there. Dahi, Horik Manion, Garrow, Jaden Hart, Johnny Cohn, David Burke, Joseph Cooney, Cahar Manion, Joe K. It's it's a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of the same team from 2017. Patrick, it's 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 it's, it's interesting to look at how how Waterford had transitioned. You say from the Derek McGrath area, but um. Right through now to Liam Cahill, you know, I know they had a couple of barren years there in between the, the All-Ireland and, and last year. I think they, they didn't win a game on Munster for two years anyway. Whereas Galway have pretty much, you know, we've kind of hung in outside maybe Kincannon aside. There hasn't been a whole pile of players of the new of the new generation, we'll say, that have really cemented them play themselves it's, and, you know, really cemented their play, should I say, and, you know, made their mark truly in, in scene direction. Yeah, I mean, looking at looking at the team there, there's 12 of that starting team are either nailed on starters or big impact subs. Like, you know, if you look at David, like David Burke and you know, Johnny Cohen's probably <coughs> possibly out of the running for this week as well. But if he was there, he's one of those. He's either starting or, he, or he's an impact sub. And that's four years ago, like, and that was a team probably in their prime in terms of it. it it, where they were at in terms of their age grade around the 25, 26 mark and all of them back then um, you know and the exertion since will have been you know obviously taken a lot out of bodies because you know I think of that 2018 year um, you know the multi games they played even 2019 when you bring in you introduce, you introduce the round robin and you have a lot of games thrown at you that way and then obviously last year difficult year for everyone and there was a player would have got a break last year of course um, but I mean, yeah, certainly the the, tur- the turnover in terms of playing personnel is there's a, a big difference between, between the two the two setups. And I mean, even since last year, the water team has changed again. With mm. even just Stephen Stephen O'Keefe stepping away, like you know, your your mainstay goalkeeper for the past decade or more, and uh, for him to step out and young lads come in and to you know the Billy Nolan to too fast settle into it fairly well. Like you know, um, I mean, there's there's clear transition in terms of. 
both players and playing style for Waterford since in, in that management turnover. Um, whereas the changeover from the Mio Dunhu to Shane Neal probably wasn't been as, as stark or um, as pronounced um, compared to that from, from a goal perspective. But, I mean, like there's been plenty of players given the opportunity, but as you say, Cannon aside, none of them, and probably Darren Morrissey now as well, you can really include him in that bracket, and just they have nailed down their spot. I mean, Shane Cooney is close to having a spot nailed down. Um, like Finch and Burke, there's quite questions about him after after his performance the last year, probably, you know, just not not doing what you'd expect or not, not dominating as, as, you, as you'd like to see uh, at that level. And, you know, they're going to be fiercely tested this weekend because, I mean, in probably we're still gonna we're still gonna be playing in, in fair heat in Turles and Saturday by the looks of it. Um and you know, water are gonna be fuller running. And I mean, I think I think personally I think that was part of Tip's problem. Um on Sunday, I mean I think Tip put so much that first half and were absolutely outstanding. Um <clears throat> but like they weren't playing just a normal sort of condition team, like they were playing the the cream of the crop in Limerick in a team that would you know, would have excelled for another half an hour in, in, in those conditions. And I think a combination of that and Limerick obviously opened their game was what led to, you know, Tip's collapse. Because, I mean, the, looking at the stats afterwards, like 10 points would have done if Tip had scored 10 points in the second half, which in the modern game isn't a big score in, in 35 minutes of Ireland. They would have won the game still technically, like, you know, and things obviously don't always pan out like that. But looking at the bare facts afterwards, that, that's all they needed in the second half to win the game. Um, you know, so... I mean, hard, hard, hard to know where, where exactly it leaves, you know, Galway in terms of where they are in the in the chase and in the pecking order behind Limerick. So certainly they're a fair bit down now, and yeah, well, there were a lot of questions answered this weekend. Um, you know, and they're going to be fiercely tested, no question about it. Watford are certainly haven't been flying. Um, you know, I mean, the once the championship they were terrible for a long time against Clare and were kind of rallying in the second half and without ever really looking like they were going to actually win it unless, unless they got the goal, um, which never looked like materialising either. Um, and then last week they were they were you know, in bother for a long time against Leach in the second half when, when Leach really, really, really got going and went at them and Fairness finished well with two, two late goals to, to, to run out seven or eight point winners all right. But, I mean, no word in Galway, their preparation for this hasn't been ideal. Um, they're missing key personnel as uh, you know, as, as you mentioned earlier, the likes the likes tight to work he's the standout one that, that, that they're missing, like you know, Jeremy Barron get back, got back for about ten or fifteen minutes. And the last day, so they'll certainly be hoping that he, he he's done enough for he's you know, trying to prove his fitness and he can start for them this week because he's a key linchpin in, in that team as well. But um two teams with questions to answer um, this weekend and you know, it's probably a case of whichever of them comes out and gets back to close enough to the level that they're capable of, that's probably they're going to come out top, you know? Yeah. I, I'm just, I, I suppose, before we, we, we kind of move on and we look at whatever, I suppose, Dublin um, last weekend would have been another one that would have been, you know, that would have stand out, or stood out from a like, goal with standpoint that result against uh, Kikini. Um, COVID issues, injuries aside to Owen O'Donnell, um, Dublin were just, they weren't the match for Kikini and I think we kind of even predicted that in the in the review podcast after the Dublin game, but they, they they likely wouldn't because I, I to be honest with you, I still have my kind of doubts over them. I don't think they're that good a team to yeah. be honest with you. I think they're you know maybe eighth best in Ireland, which is which is probably a good a, a good distance down maybe along along, along that company anyway. Um, Kikini just showed an altogether better game management to all from players. You know, a couple of half chances for goals early on. Instead, they tagged over their points. They I think they were I think they were four points up, you know, in the early stages, you know, they kind of just kept ticking away. And anytime double and rally, they managed to pick off a few points again and you know keep them at arm's length. And then all of a sudden, next thing it's just suddenly a, a TJ penalty bang back at the late and the game is over. It's just, it's a, it, it's that easy. Whereas it's complete contrast to how Galway um Galway went about their went about things against Dublin. Um this was just very disappointing when you when you see it, like I think. I, I I didn't see any scenario last week in the COVID or anything, you know, even before the COVID issues. And I know they were missing Ronan Hayes and they were missing um, Keno Callahan and Owen O'Donnell. But even still, I, I just did never saw them beating Kikini um, just on the back of even the Galway performance. I know they got a, a lot of plaudits for it, but I think it was more a case that Galway were, were pretty, pretty 
shy to be honest with you, put it, put it, to put it in layman's terms. Um, um, you know, it was just a, a complete contrast to how Galway approached the test against Dublin and, you know, Kikini really showed, you know, how you put a team to the sword, didn't they, Patrick? Yeah, I mean, Kikini did what you would expect, have expected them to do, what you would have expected to go with. So, I mean, Dublin are always going to give you a game, but it's kind of like playing, often playing Italy in the, the Six Nations, you expect a decent old battle for 45, 50 minutes and then you kind of, you get a, you get a key score and you kind of push away and pull away from finish. No, that's how that's how this played out. I mean, Dublin rallied a bit a bit in the first half and got up to got level at nine points apiece. And, you know, then after half time, can you just kind of kicked on through the gears and tacked over a few scores and the game was put to bed even probably before before the penalty in truth. Like you know, but that's what you would expect have expected Galway to do. Like you know, but they just didn't do it. And uh, I mean, we geez, we have planned long enough about it there for two weeks ago going going back through it and um. Talk to him during the post mortem, but I mean, there wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like he kind of jumped up to the the top of the list of contenders for for the All Ireland runs. And after this performance, it was a case of going out and doing what you expect them to do because they're a better team than Dublin, and they just went out and they showed it, and they did it professionally without being brilliant by any means, but they just got the job done like a good, well oiled machine should do. Um, so it's perfect for them in terms of their preparation for for, for another semi final. Um, we're certainly envious of the position they're in, and you know, put it that way. Um, you know, because they're looking at our, our potential road to an All Ireland. Um, at this stage, and it's probably Watford, Tip, Limerick, and then possibly Kenny in, in the Ireland final, like all in the space of about five weeks. Is it? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> if we get over step one, we'll we'll, we'll certainly will we'll, we'll be pleased enough because you know the. The challenges they, they kind of come at you straight away, don't they? Like you know, uh, in terms of meeting quality opposition every week. So, um, no, certainly, I think we're 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 paying the price for you know not going out with the the right mindset against Dublin. Now, when you look at where Kenny are, geez, would you you'd be sitting pretty here this week, um, reviewing a, a, a Leinster final win and having a couple of weeks off now with four four another in semi final. You know, had, had things uh, transpired differently, but here we are, Tom, but uh trip to Sunny Thurless on a Saturday afternoon to play Watford in the qualifiers <laughs> what we joined well, well like one thing on Kilkenny now and I'd, I'd agree they probably haven't they, 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 the likelihood is they probably won't win in Ireland but to be honest with you I think out of the, the pick of the bunch they, 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 they are the most likely at, at this point the way things have panned out for them um, you know they're likely they've avoided Limerick now at this point which is a huge thing and then in a one-off game an All-Ireland final Kilkenny Jesus, you know, like you mean, like they 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 deserve tremendous credit because you know that they, they will absolutely give one hundred and fifty percent in that final if that's the case, and they'll make it a real battle. And Limerick won't have it their own way, as we as we saw in twenty nineteen. Like you know, we saw what a Kilkenny team can do. You know, just you know, and there is that element of the black and amber in a final as well too. Like you know that that Limerick haven't seen. You know, it's. It's it's one of these things, you know. It's 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 a frightening prospect, as we know, from 12, 15, further back. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's a it's it's a frightening proposition when you when you're when you're going around the pre match, then you see just the the black and amber staring back at you. Um, it's like in fairness, like I you have to give Kilkenny tremendous credit. Like I I I I honestly believe that Galway have a better panel of players at the moment than Kilkenny. Yeah. Um, but. They've won the last two Leinster titles, and no one could say they don't deserve them, given how they performed. It. They produced when the performances was in the needed. Um, they're you know like Cody. People were calling for Cody's head stages over the last couple of years, and I think it's the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. Like it's yeah. what a, uh, this, have some realism, like to, uh, like to yourselves, like Jesus. If Cody was going in the morning, you'd be down on your knees begging him to come somewhere else because like what yeah. he brings to the setup is just phenomenal. It's just you know you know what you're going to get every single day. You're going to get a performance. You know you're going to get it. You know you're going to get a hundred percent from the team. And you know if that's not good enough, no one will give out about it. Like it's it's a matter of you know, it, you know you perform to the best of your ability, and you know you dogged it and you worked and like cause some of the work rate right out of them is is unbelievable. Like and I, I heard somebody say there the last year in very 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 point and point about TJ Reid where they said like TJ Reid hurls like a lad who's absolutely shite at hurling. Uh, or sorry, yeah. he works like a lad who is absolutely shining at Ireland. He works like a lad who's absolutely unbelievable at Ireland. But he, he he works like a lad who's absolutely useless. Yeah. Who's just a, a worker on a you know a bad intermediate junior 
team, like along those lines. But you know, when you can get that out of your best player, you know, it's, it's definitely going to drive on your weaker players as well, which is which is absolutely massive. But anyway, that's we won't be talking about Kikini or Dublin now from this point. We'll, we'll give ourselves nightmares, otherwise, uh, we'll move on to the game at the weekend. Patrick, it's a, it's a huge game, you know, it's I, I said it already, I think I used the word ear defining. I think it's one of the cases where Galway don't win. It's, I think, to be honest, truth be told, there's going to be huge pressure on Shane O'Neill. Um, you know, from Auspice's perspectives in terms of supporters and stuff like that. Um, would you go along the lines of that as well? Do you think it's a, it's a, it's, it's a huge pressure game for management team and players? And, you know, it's, it's probably, the sense there, it's probably, probably the end of an era for some of the players as well. Um, you know, it's, we've, we've touched on there, it's 2017, a lot of players have miles in the clock. It's a chance we could see some stepping away if, if defeat comes on Saturday afternoon? Uh, yeah, very much so, yeah, because, I mean, I think uh, that's based on the fact that, you know, we were coming away from the league and we couldn't have been happier with what had unfolded in the league. Like, you know, it would be a different story if we'd had a very bad league, if we tried a lot of players and they hadn't worked um, all the lads were short to perform. But, like, we went through a really tough group, um, won four out of five games, Gave a lot of game time to different players, tried out different things with different different players in different positions, and all in all, like by and large, he got we got we got everything that they would have wanted out of the league. Like you know, it, it went well. There's no point saying otherwise. Now you can question the the quality of the games and the the, the the league itself all you want, but in terms of preparation, God, we got as much out of the league as any other team, um, if not more in some cases. So, like there was no reason, like if if well, say if we lost to a Dublin team that were just on a different level, good, like you know, they were outstanding and Galway had played a good game compared to the French too, like you wouldn't be as, I suppose, despondent or downbeat, possibly looking ahead to what, what's to come over the next few weeks or equally saying that there's that, as much pressure on uh, on Shane O'Neill because you know, teams can, lo- can lose the game on, on any given day, but you know, Kilkenny wouldn't have lost that game for the reasons that, that Galway lost them, you know, you, you can get beaten by a better team, put it, put it that way. But you know, you think I, I think back to the goal extra game last year and David Fitz's comments afterwards, where he was just called out his players' work rate and, and, and attitude, and it's like you know, Brian Cody has never done an interview like that, like you know, he's never had to. Um, and I mean, like Shane O'Neill didn't, didn't, didn't necessarily do it after his opening game, but he, he was he was within his rights to do it, like you know. Um, mm. so that's that's the response you want to see from goal if. If you see another performance like what we saw against Dublin, yeah, you you have to ask serious questions. And I mean, that's it's not solely a management thing either, because you know, players are responsible for their own getting their own mind frame <coughs> up to where it needs to be to go out and play. You know, in the Heath Championship, and you know, not go not go championship for them. Like you know, what what more could you want? What more what more could you want to be preparing for mentally? Like you know, and um, so you need to see that response and that right mindset from Galway going out this weekend. And if you do. Like that that's really half the battle, isn't it? Because like we know the quality that's in the ranks. Um but equally, you know, if you go out and you lose this weekend, yeah, I think in terms of both for management and for possibly some 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 of that team, some of that Ireland winning team, you know, the the end of the road could possibly be an eye like, you know. Um and to be to be ashamed shame to see it happen considering, you know, and when you wouldn't have learned in twenty seventeen there was no reason that you know, we couldn't see you could no reason why there couldn't have been another one or two All Ireland's to come after because, you know, as I say, that was at the time the age profile of that team was very favourable to have success in the next couple of years. Um, but it's at the stage now where this this could possibly be it for that for that group, like you know, um, and the certainly they haven't made it easy for them to have the, I mean, the, the role that we that we have, that we have to, to possibly try try win try win a six, um, but yeah, pressure is on to perform, no question about it. It's not going to be easy. The championship record against Watford it was abysmal in 2017. Put put that right to, to some degree, but um, I mean, the last two trips to to Thurles to play Watford, they certainly they're, they're not too memorable from a golf perspective in 2009 and 2011. So uh, we'll be hoping for hoping for better. Anyhow, you know. Well, that's it. Like you touched on it there. It's it's about attitude, mindset, and application. Um, you know, ahead ahead of the weekend. Like it's for me, it's time for you know, big performances, some team leaders and time for a few of the, the more experienced heads to really stand up now and produce like this. Like you'd have to imagine the would the team would have to be hurting after, you know, after the Dublin show and like, and you, you, what you'd be hoping for is really kind of ratty kind of training sessions afterwards. You know what I mean? Like, and that's getting on, getting on the backs of, 
of, of lads who maybe are, you know, kind of going through the motions and stuff like that. Like, you'd want full-blooded hits run in and letting lads know that they're there and, you know, there's there's a real battle for places and stuff like that because, you know, it's it, it just wasn't good enough. It was it was desperate, like, the, the, the Dublin game. It was very disheartening after what we produced during the league, you know, turnarounds against Waterford and, and Cork, you know, drawn with, or beaten, beaten Limerick and, you know, Hockey in Westmead and the Tipperary game, I feel we could have won it if we kept, you know, the, the 15 we had on the team without making, uh, the 15 we had on the field coming in around the third quarter rather than making all the changes for in terms of pressures. I feel if we really wanted to win that game, we could have as well because I thought we'd tip on the ropes or we started making adjustments and switches. Um, but yeah, no, time time now to put up or shut up, to be honest with you. It's, 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 a, it's a massive game. The players have to have to deliver. There's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot of players that have, you know, Question marks over them over the last over the last few weeks, uh, or, you know, following that Dublin result. Um, I suppose just you touched on the, the record with Waterford. What is it? 10, 10 losses in in Championship action before the twenty seven uh, the twenty seventeen All Ireland final win, which was which was the one we will take. Um, but it, it's a game to be very wary of. You know, the, there is a third factor. There is a hysterical. Now you you've touched on but already with me. I think even before we came on, you know that that our record has improved. But like. Water deserve, regardless of their performance this year, they deserve tremendous respect. We see what they could, they did to us in the in the league, particularly in the early stages. They cut our defence to ribbons in the, in the league meeting in Pear Stadium. I think they were, you know, like the the, the running game. We just had no answers for. We were, uh, you know, in fairness, we came to grips with us then in, the, in and really kicked on. But up until that point, it had looked very worrying. Um, we need to remember they're all Ireland finalists from last year and we we lacked lyrically about Kilkenny and but look at the way that Waterford took part Kilkenny in the all Ireland semi final last year. You know, they looked pretty much on the ropes. Waterford came back and they, they absolutely annihilated them and it was probably their best performance, you know, in long, long time living memory anyway, from from what I can remember, you know, just the way they systematically dismantled Kilkenny like that. So they have quality, like we have Waterford have a lot of key players, a lot of quality players in their ranks as well. I know we've touched on they're missing Dubork and they're missing Stephen O'Keefe, but if you go down through it, like Prunty, probably one of the best fullbacks in the game, alongside Owen O'Donnell, um, Dahi Burke when he's there, Caleb Lyons, you know, freak. People talk about Kyle Hayes' goal at the weekend. I think Caleb Lyons is another player who could be capable, along with Austin Gleeson, who, yeah. who, who could actually produce a goal like that, like, you know, just mm, yeah. keep going. Uh, Barron, another one midfield, one of the best midfielders of his generation. Uh, don't know his fitness. I know, you know, maybe you know if they got fifty minutes out of him, they'd probably be happy. Uh, Lutron Gleeson, Stephen Bennett, and Daisy Hutchinson. Like going through the names, they have lots of quality in their ranks as well. And you know, it's a game we should be. You know, there's not going to be much in it, Patrick. I, I honestly think there won't be more than a score in it. To be honest with you. Oh no, very yeah, very much reading as well as the quality of personnel you've listed there. I think they have the tools to hurt Galway as well. I mean, if you're if you're going out and playing a physical sort of a game and pumping long ball in the top of your attack and looking to win the 50-50s, you'd say that's, that's probably going to favour Galway to some degree. But, I mean, mobility is, is, is probably a concern in, in, in the Galway defence and there's no better team out there to exploit that than water because that's just how they love to play. They love to run run, run the ball, take take passes, come in off the shoulder and run through tackles and break tackles that way. Um, and I mean, case in point, the perfect example of that was was that that Ireland semi final against Kenny last year, the second half, where they were just they just cut them to shreds, and there was examples of it and bits of it to be seen, as you say, in that that league game in Salt Hill last month or or, or the May of the stage. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean that 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 is the concern, and you know we we'll get into team makeup and team setup in a while, but. Um, you know there there are, there are areas of concern there, and you know, do certain players suit suit certain op- op- opponents? Would say in terms of matchups and that this week, or are they going to go hold their positions and you know be trusted to be trusted to do a job? Um, certainly they have they have to be on their guard in that, in, in that regard in terms of the water runners coming through. And I think I think back to the Dublin goal and you know Chris Cummy and. It was a James Band, I think it was the other, the other runner going through for the goal. Mm. They just weren't, they weren't tracked. Like, that's what we're going to bring for 70 minutes. They won't have those runners coming. Um, so it's a case of being switched on and being able to do it for the 70 minutes because, you know, again, if, if that, that heat that we're experiencing at the minute is still there as well, it's going to make things even more difficult in that, in that regard and probably, probably play to Watford's strengths 
um, some bit more as well in terms of you know having having the gas and having the the, the gas and the legs and in, in, in the tanks to to stay going. And, you know, think think of their their running game. Think of the likes of Jack Prendergast, the Jamie Barron, Austin Gleeson, and um, Desi Hutchison, all brilliant to run the ball. Kieran Lines obviously coming coming from coming from deep, like and taking ball at pace. And I mean, if he's coming at you at pace, there's nothing you can do with him. Like no matter how big or strong you are, there's nothing you can do with him. So it's a case of tracking the runners initially and trying to stop the initial pass. Um, and it takes a serious putting in a serious shift mentally and physically to be able to do that, to be switched on all the time and to be, if you're a wing forward and Cale Mines and he takes off and you're you're after making a big run yourself for, for a score maybe in the previous play, you know, the easy thing to do is to let him off and let the backs take care of him. But that's what that, that, that that's what'll be your undoing for a finish, like, you know, so um, you know, you'll yeah, that, there'll be a lot called upon in that regard on, on, on players to, you know, forwards to track back and backs to be switched on in terms of runners coming at them and coming off the shoulder and that so um no it's it's a big ass, that's for sure. But I mean, you know, we have the personnel capable of dealing with us, that's that's for sure. But we just need to go we need to go do it, don't we? Yeah, that's for sure. Just on lines, I suppose. Just I know Galway had a specific game plan for him in the league, and I think it was Adrian too. He was he was kind of picked a wing forward to kind of try and nullify him. And I know Adrian he finished, he finished a goal um, in that game, and maybe he might have switched around for for periods of the game as well. But uh, like lines is ten damage, and we saw he picked off five points in that game, like from play like so it's, You know, there is that huge threat there, and I think it's going to be so interesting to who we detail to try and you know. Like, you'll never nullify him entirely. So, you know what I mean? Keep his threat to two points, maybe. You know, because I think he will. I think more likely every game you look at Waterford, he has a, he has more or less two points after his name. And if, you, if you've done that, he's like a he's like a good corner forward. You're, you're kind of happy enough about that. Like, if the, you know, he's going to punish you anyway, no matter what. Like, so you're, you're you know, if you keep if you can keep your man like that to, to two points. But it's an interesting one because, you know, it's a... It's a it's a change in game, isn't it, really, in terms of the half-back line? And I suppose we won't go into too detail now, but this new attacking wing-back, you know, your Kyle Hayes, your Caleb Lines, you know, these kind of details. And I saw the double under 20s use it to great effect as well against Galway. That it's, it's just the way that it's going. It'll, like, I find the Lions one now very interesting. I know we'll, we'll run down to the team in, in a bit as well, but I think that could be a, a crucial matchup there in terms of, you know, Putting the the the, the halters on water for the small because he's a huge weapon for them. And I suppose just two other huge weapons that will probably need detail in as well. And before we go, we'll pick the we'll try and pick our Galway teams in a few minutes. But Stephen Bennett and Daisy Hutchinson, Bennett, you know we know what he's going to bring. He's elite forward, one of the best in the country. Hutchinson's form has been fantastic during the league. And he because when the game was going to get away from uh, water for the bit, he was the one who really carried the fight in uh, Salt Hill. So it'll be interesting to see who picks them up as well. So. For me, in a way, the matchup with Lines, probably Stephen Bennett and Desi Hutchison, and I probably would have said maybe Jamie Barron as well if he was 100%, but we don't know what he's like yet. I think they're going to be key key battles for Galway in the sense that I think if we can win those three, I think we send a great chance of, of winning the game. Yeah, very much so. I mean, every team wants their, their standout players to perform on the day. I mean, the same what we speak about, Joe. Who are we going to detail for Conor Whelan, for Kincannon, for Cotton Mannion, you know, for the, these these sort of fellas, um, you know, so those, they're they're the conundrums. Like, because I mean, you 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 look at it and you say, if Watford do a job and those those three fellas, you say, sure, how are how are we going to win the game? Like, you know, um, so yeah, so th- those battles are there, there to be won every week. Um, how do we go to actually win them? <laughs> I, I, I mean. I, like for for a, for a Jamie Barron, it's kind of it's a Johnny Cohen sort of role, really, isn't it? Like you know, you'd, you'd love to see him there for it, um, put it that way. And I mean, I think I think Adrian too, his his legs and his athleticism were worth a lot this weekend as well. Given granted, things haven't he hasn't he hasn't had a great the last couple of games, the Cork game and, and, and the Dublin game. But I mean that. You know, he could be a fellow to to do a job and possibly to go back the way to I don't know, if they were looking at an Aston Lease or something like that. Hurricane, a, a lot, a lot. It's kind of it's hard to figure out. I I don't like the idea of putting a putting a fellow wing forward to, to try to stop a wing back. I know there's an element there's an element of it, but I I'd, I'd, I'd be much more in favour of you know having a having a Conor Mannion on 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 Caelan lines and making lines do do the run after Conor Mannion. You know that's. You know, if Kyle Manning goes scoring two or three points in the first quarter, 
lines has to do something about that as well, you know. So I'd, I'd be more in favour of that rather than fucking designating a forward to go and try to stop and send out the wrong message and the wrong mindset for what you're trying to do um, for me because I thought, like, we, we, we talked about the limit game last year, the Ireland the semi-final, there was a, a limit to the, the Galway game plan. It was, there was a sort of a containment about, element about it um, and we know now that that's just, it's not going to work if we play Limerick again this year. It's, you know, obviously we're a long way away from it. But if we are, if we do play Limerick again this this year, it's a case of just going for it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you have to go for it, like, because, you know, we're going to need the goals like Tip Bat and on Sunday in the Munster final. Um, and you're not going to get that by playing an extra man or playing sort of trying, trying, to, trying to stop Limerick scoring, like, you know. So I think there's some, a similar element um, to that in, in terms of, Lines and what you, what you do with lines. Um, I mean, he was he was in freakish uh, form that day in Salt Hill. He doesn't like he doesn't bounce one five six points every day. Like you know, if, he, if he was, it'd be a different story. But I think it's the case of trying to get somebody on that you know can hurt him going the other way. And um, you know, so who that is again? You know, I mean, Cotman is probably probably a midfielder. But he's the kind he's the kind of fella that you could see you know have, having success on him. Um, in terms of going forward, and if you can cannon or wheel and two other fellas, like you know, obviously, and one of them is going to be inside, possibly the two of them, we don't know. Um, but those those are the those are the things you have to try to work out during the week, like you know, down the other end, Fizzy Hutchinson, I don't know, some like I expect Hart to start this weekend. Um, where I don't know, it's either four or seven for me, anyhow. Um, could be a could be could, could, could be could be allowed to do a job there on Hutchinson, Hart, you know. Um, you know, again, it's a case of the lads out the field trying to make the job as easy as possible because it doesn't matter what defender you are or how good you are. If there's diagonal, low diagonal ball being spread in front of Des Russians, and you're going to want to get roasted no matter who you are. Like, you know, so there's, there's a case of case they made for the boys outside the field doing the work to, to make sure that that quality ball doesn't come in as well. So, yeah, a lot of conundrums to start out, but. I mean, the good thing is that Watford would have, have the same conundrums this week, you know. So, um, I mean, yeah, this is it, certainly there's plenty, plenty of thinking to be done these, these nights for, for management teams, anyhow, no doubt. Sure, we'll, we'll, give, we'll give it a rattle here ourselves, I suppose. We'll just kind of <laughs> go down through what, what we maybe what we like to see, what we would probably go with if you were if you were trying to pick with it. We'd both agree it's, it's a fairly it's a fairly easy one in goals, and I'd say in a Murphy, there's no, there's no question marks there. Couldn't fault him against Dublin wasn't his problem. Um, that the that the team malfunctioned elsewhere. Um, I think he I think he had a fine game. I suppose full back line and in fairness to them they had a they had, we mentioned it afterwards. I think they this line wasn't an issue at all. Um, no. they, they most they mostly had a, they, they all had pretty pretty good games. Uh, Shane Cooney, Garage McInerney, Darren Morrissey. Um, like they they weren't a fault. But as we touched on, and I suppose we probably should maybe. You know, examine the back six as a whole really here more than anything yeah. else. Um, um, and you mentioned it there. It's it's probably the fact that uh, you mentioned it in the previous show that it's, it's probably the fact that what you're not getting from Dahi at six is is the reason why he'd be moved back to three. Uh, but then that leaves leaves that hole at six as to who is to fill. So, like in fairness, the half back line it's been very. You know, we we talked about it a lot. We thought, geez, this is going to be the the half back line for all half back lines and a half back line that could match. You know your limericks out there, or you know, are you know the, the very creme de la creme of defensive, but it, it hasn't been the case. Parik Manny and Dai Finton hasn't really set the world alight so far. So, you know, like, what are you going to do? Like, first and foremost, do you think before we go anywhere else, do you think that Dai will be full back this weekend, or where do you think? Like, I, honestly, I haven't a clue. I, I, you could, I, I, I'm not going to even, I, I, I'll try and guess, but I, I, I really don't. I, I haven't, a, I haven't a clue what management are going to do in terms of this. No, neither do I. But uh, <laughs> if I if I if I if I if I was picking it, I'd have I'd have him at three, yeah. I'd have him at three and I I'd actually I'd actually be in favour of pulling Shane Cooney out the field, um, getting him out, out in the half back lane, but at, at six even, um, or at seven with Fin with Finchin at six. Um just in terms of his ball playing ability, I think I think it'd be worth a lot out there. You know, he's a great great stickman, obviously as we've seen for years now at St Thomas's. Um Size wise, yeah, he's definitely he's not the biggest, but I mean, we've, we've touched on it already. If size was the and um, physical presence was a defining factor in the half back lane, now Dahi Burke would be large at six, but he's not because the, the ball isn't being pumped down top of him, you know. Um, 
it's a case of, you know, Cooney knows the position, he knows how to play six, he's done it for the last nearly a decade, but with Thomas, certainly the last six, six, seven years anyhow, um, and playing at a high level in, in, in that regard, you know, especially when you when you go outside the county as well. Um, so for me, I think he, he could offer a bit bit out there and he could possibly a heart to go slap back in the corner or something like that. Um yeah, I mean, you know, that, that those runners coming through are, are are definitely a concern, and that's that's why I'm possibly, you know, it's hard, it's harsh to, to it'd be harsh to bench Garage Mac after the last day after the Dublin game because again you're one of the better better players for Galway on the day, and certainly not the problem at fullback. Um, but I mean, it's just it's just the, the kind of game that, that that wouldn't suit him for from from my eye anyhow. Um, you know. Even as we as we, we we've compared very often to twenty seventeen, like you know, it's it's a different game now. It's a different water team, a different side they're coming up against. Um, so that'll possibly be the way I'd be going. Be uh, Park Mannion, Finton, and Shane Cooney half back line. I mean, like that, and that's a very dramatic change from what we saw two weeks ago against Dublin. So it's definitely not going to happen. Like <laughs> put it that way. Um, but that's. That's kind of the, the way I be, way I be looking at things anyhow, and you know, try to get you know, Cooney's a good ball player, a good outlet there. You know, to take passes from either from the full back full back line coming out, or from the midfield. You know, turning back and giving him a pass back. Um, you know, he, he's a good option there, and he play, play nice, nice to wait and start the ball in, into our attack and find find lads of balls behind the that. So, um, it's it, it's an option now, you know, but. Whether it's an option that's utilised or not, I don't know. But yeah, that's that's what I'd go on. I'd go Morrissey, Dottie Burke, Hart, uh, Parik, Finton and Shane Coney. That's what I'd be doing anyhow, but sure. I don't get paid to do it, so what would I know? Yeah, I know more than myself, but I'm going to have a crack as well. Now, it'd be fairly similar what I would be trying to do. Um, it would be Gerard Mack. Unfortunately, that would miss out. And like... Like on farm, like on farm, he does not deserve to miss out, like which is which is so yeah. harsh. Like you know, it's just it's just one of these things. But it's probably the cutthroat nature. But I would be willing. Now this might sound crazy. It kind of only hit me last time. But I'd be nearly willing to try Joseph Cooney again, uh, in the halfback time. Uh, just give it, give it, give it one more rattle because I think there is a position in forwards that you could start have an island in there. So that kind of opens up that six. Then I think it's so it would be it would be Darren Morrissey Dahi. Uh, Darren Morrissey, Dahi, sorry, Aiden Hart. Um, oh, where am I going? Parik Mannion, um, Parik Mannion, Joseph Cooney, and probably Shane Cooney on form. I'd say, um, I probably Finton would probably miss out for me as well. Uh, to be honest with you, um, just I just don't think the form has been good, and I think Shane Cooney, Shane Cooney's his form has probably been slightly better than Finton over the last, you know, in championship in the Dublin game at least now. Uh, but, like, I suppose it, it will be the game where you probably will require, you know, Garrod will definitely see minutes, you know, as the game kind of opens up a small bit and there is the option there, you know, that will give it and Finton is likely, you know, it gives you a further option for the bench as well in, in terms of that. So, now, again, no more than yourself, I don't see that happen. I think it will be, you know, I don't see the, I don't see wholesale changes. I think that, the, 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 I think we could, I think we likely see Dai and Garrod switching, to be honest with you. I think that could be what management go with. Um, it's a mm. big. It would be a big call. It wouldn't be something I would agree with. I I would be more in favour of even going with your your one of pulling Shane Coney out to six. I think Hart is nailed on. Hart has to start. Um, whether that's Connor or Wingback, I think I think Hutchinson might be a nice matchup for him. You know, uh, in in terms of that, um, you know, so that might be he might he might be suited to that, or even Darren Morrissey could could have a, a crack at Hutchinson as well. You know. Depending on how it goes, you can always switch them around. But I, I, I think we'll pretty, pretty much see much of muchness. And maybe, maybe the Dubai switch, um, Garage and Dai. But the other, the other way, I would, I would be more. If I would go with my one, obviously, first, and then I would be in favour of, of your one before what I think will happen. But look at management are, are the ones who have to make the call. It's, it's their heads on the chopping block. So you know we're only speculating here and trying to pick what. But we think we don't see lads in training. We're not we're not privy to what lads are producing, you know, inside inside the gates of Kinney Park or wherever, maybe Lock George or wherever they're they're kind of they're shaping up. But yeah, it'll be you know I I think that Joseph Cooney thing probably warrants another a game like I think he had a fine game on TJ Reid last year in the Leinster Premier Final. Real tough going um in the the game against Limerick, but who 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 didn't 
who, who didn't yeah. have a tough game, you know. I suppose the only aspect is you're, you're losing his ball quality for the forward. I suppose he is one of those other options for Canem Lines if you wanted to go with that as well as in, you know, he has probably the, you know, the legs and the height and stuff to bother him. And, you know, he's that bit of power, he's a defensive, you know, qualities as well that could put him on the back foot. So, so yeah, so we what what do you think? You, you said what you think, but what do you think Galway will line up with? Like, I think it will be just a switch of Garage and Dye. I think Garage will go to six and Dye at three. Um, but it wouldn't be what either of us would go with. Yeah, I think, I think that's very, very, very likely going to happen. But I do, I do, I do think there's, there's still a spot for Hart. Um, and it's yeah. possibly if you're if you're picking someone to miss out, it's either Garage or, or Finch to work for me. Um, yeah, that's kind of I I I'd, I'd be in favour of your, your just Justin suggestion as well. Um, I thought it worked very well for a, a lot of games last year. Um, Baron obviously <clears throat> the one that mattered most, the other in the same final and stuff. Um, you know, yeah, there's there, there, there's. There's arguments they made on both sides, but I mean, like, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, big decisions to make and like wholesale changes to a, to a setup like that in only, what, two weeks from one game to the next. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't always work either because, you know, these things take time to bid in despite how familiar players are with each other and this, this squad are obviously together. So, you know, it's it, it certainly, it's, it's uh, we, we, we certainly aren't presenting the, the, the guaranteed blueprint that's going to work to be bought, like, you know, put it that way. Um, but, I mean, from moving further up the field into midfield, I mean, there's question marks over Johnny Cohen, we're saying is very, is very unlikely, probably not going to be involved. Questions over David Burke as well. Um, I, I, I do, I, I don't know. They were worth the start now. I'm, I'm not sure about it, to be honest. Um, again, depends on who, who you have with them. Um, but, I mean, they certainly could do a job for 40 minutes on the, the defensive sort of midfield side of things alongside Cahill or something like that. But I think I think there's a possibly a role for, for Agent Joey in, in, that, in that spot, in that sort of defensive midfielder role. Um, just as my touch on air, they need to cover back and help out his backs and equally, you know, be a driving start presence when he gets the ball in his hand and driving forward and popping passes off. Um, but I think there's possibly a role there for him. Um, you know, and probably probably Cahill, Cahill be alongside him for me. Um, Loftus, I'm not sure. I don't know. I I, I don't think he'll start this again. To be honest, um, I'm not sure that the, the role is really there for him. Um, at the minute, the way the way Galway needs to play and you know to to counteract the stress the water we're going to be bringing at them. Um, so. That's probably what I'd be looking at would be an agent to he and uh Connor Mannion midfield. Um just for the, the reasons I was saying, you know, that you know has, has the legs to cover to cover back and help out his backs and that could, you know, pave the way for Cahill to hopefully have a have a big influence going forward, you know. That's for sure. Well, I, I suppose that is a very valid point. And I I am um, in terms of uh, with our options, they are limited now at the moment because as as you said, I think I don't believe that Johnny Cohen has strained a whole pile over the last few weeks since since even I think yeah. that hamstring injury he picked up um so you know that was obviously obviously a pretty significant injury at the time so and I I believe David Burke for anyone that isn't aware I think he's carrying an ankle injury um he's if he'd be touching goal I think ahead of it like so it could be more of a as the game opens up a bit um mm. you could you could you could see him there I suppose one thing on Loftus is he did have a very good idea he did have a very good now it's chalk and cheese again and you know, league and championship, league is league and championship is championship. Completely different. He did have a good league game against Waterford in Pierce Stadium. Yeah. I thought I think he, he scored two points and he did a lot right. Now, his game against Dublin was not what you'd come to expect. Like, uh, you know, you you need more from your midfielder. I think Cahill is a certainty. I'd agree there. So as your other options, then, if David Burke and Johnny Cohen are, are under pressure, your other options are Adrian Toohey, like you mentioned, and... The Joe experiment, but I, I don't think that's a runner to be honest with you. Um, I, I just don't see it like I like I, I know he had a big influence when he came off the bench, but you know, to start a game in midfield of this magnitude in championship in Turles, I, I don't know. Um, uh, whether it's a runner, maybe maybe it's a place to just you know, he could find a bit of form because he's on play, he's probably he hasn't produced the performances we've known to expect over him in the last you know, few championship games that we played over the last couple of years, so um. And so for me, it's 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 Cahill Mannion, and then it's a straight shoot up between Loftus and Adrian Tui. And I suppose, are we going for wholesale changes? You know, if, if I'm if I'm gutting the team defensively, I can't really go to the midfield. Like, and I, I know Adrian Tui has plenty mm. of experience in midfield, and he's going to bring a lot. And his legs, 
will be will be important. So maybe it's a case that I would go with Adrian Tui from the start, right? But then as the game opens up a small bit, Loftus has used the position and, you know, maybe get Adrian Tui to empty the tank for 50, 45, 50 minutes and tell him that, you know, this is going to be the case. And then if Loftus told as well that you're going to be coming on at this point, you know, and we really want you to kind of sow the, the game together and, you know, pull all the balls in the ball and deliver good quality ball into the, the inside line as the game opens up. So i probably go along with what you're going with there. I would go with Adrian and Kyle and it's a big, big game for Kyle, uh, to be honest with you, completely, yeah. you know, you know, you you mentioned it in the past as well. I don't think we've seen Kyle Mendes shoot as many wides as we have over the last over the last few games. It just hasn't been the case. Like he, other games, he would have ended with you know huge tellies after his name, but then it 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 hasn't happened from like. But he's like on form. Kyle Mendes is you know a devastating player. He's one of our one of our very best players. He's you know he's a game changer for us. Um, so you'd be hoping he will deliver and. You know, like hoping he can have a huge influence in proceedings. Whether that's you know at midfield or whether that's at centre forward for you know periods as well, we, we just don't know. Depending on how, but we'll, I'll, I'll I'll go along with the same as yourself there. I'll we'll go with Kahan and Adrian in midfield. Um, would be would be what I would go with given given the the the, the fitness situation of the of the rest of the lads. Um, attack yeah. team should be our best unit. Um, totally misfired against Dublin. Uh, I suppose if what was it, we'll run down through at the start and attack. It was Connor, like the obviously players interchanged Connor Cooney, Joe Carey, Adrian Chewy, Connor Weed, and Joseph Cooney, and Brian Kincannon. Um, Nyden, for me, the obvious one here has to start. Just I, I can't see any reason why he, he, he shouldn't. Um, yeah, just I think he's he's done enough to championship. It's a few other lads there that haven't set the world alight either, and he's definitely should be ahead of them in the front running. Um, like in, in that sense, he's probably to come in for Adrian Tuohy. Uh, so someone's going to lose out back part of the field uh, if Tuohy goes to midfield. So I think that's to be the obvious one. Now he doesn't have to be going in straight swap. Caden Lyons wing for Adrian Tuohy. Like it's you know he can mm, play yeah. centre forward there, and Kenny can go wing forward or, or something along that. Um, other interesting one like has jo- Joseph Cooney done enough to start if he do, if he doesn't go back to my 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 six uh, spot? Has he done enough to start the tech? Um, for you, Patrick, would be one of the questions I'd be putting to you. Brian Cannon, totally off colour against Dublin. Uh, we'll expect a lot more. Um, probably Connor, Connor Whelan, Connor Coney probably did enough. They were decent showings. They were definitely the pick of the attack. And um, I suppose Joe's position, like no one is saying drop Joe Kenny, but like performance in Dublin, you know, was was worrying. And we'll, we'll expect a whole lot more the next day. He'll definitely start because I suppose you're, you're going through your other options there and they're. They're not standing out either on form. You have Niall Burke, Jason Finn, Kevin Cooney, and Jam Enya now. While they're fine hurlers in their own right, it's a big. It would be a huge call to throw any of them in. So, look, give me your give me your six and your reasons for it if if you can. Yeah, well, there's no point. Yeah, it doesn't matter where in the end of the video because it, it, yeah, as you said, the modern game doesn't yeah. matter. But it's just the, a six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only the only change I I would make would be Niall to come in, um, and. It is is until we push back, push back the field. That's that's the only change I'd make to the six. So I'd probably have you'd have Nylon playing that sort of and I hope we go back to the fourth, the kind of four man half hour line, you know, the Nylon free sort of a role rather than you know a further out sort of third midfielder slash swing back. Um, we had against Dublin. Um I like I really like Nylon in that role and then around third as well, you know, and it's just if he gets on the ball, he's gonna score like, you know. Mm. So that's 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 what I what I kind of what I, what I like to see for him. Um, I mean, in I mean, I I, I wouldn't be I I like I like kind of Wheel and and Cannon kind of one one either line. Um, you know, just because they're two they're two big players, and you know if you're if the two of them inside and the ball is not going in enough, you know you're 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 losing. And a lot can be hugely effective out the field. I mean, uh, and Cannon was more so last show we saw him out out, out, from, out from that department. Like you know, I think it's like it's Limerick. Like he he he'd an excellent game out there. Um, you know. Uh, and Whelan then as well obviously probably have seen more of him in the outer line than the inner line this year like you know so I one of them in the inner line ha- I'd be happy enough with uh, Joss Cooney probably half hour half hour line for me um, and then Kelling and Co- Connor Cooney to kind of it inter- wouldn't be over the first either side either side what way I'd see I think, I think Kelling could be Kelling could be effective inside like you know he, he he won he won ball off Connor Prunty and did well on Connor Prunty at times in the, in the league game. That was the game, of course, where we saw him actually going in and and you know that was the 
the first introduction we've seen to it and where it became a possibility for a championship, like, you know. Um, so, like, his cuteness, and he, he, he'd be a great file for somebody beside him, like, you know, if he's breaking ball, even if the tie ball coming in top of him, he's the kind of fella who'll spot the man beside him and he'll just knock it down straight to his path, like, he's capable of doing that. So, I, he could have a big a big impact on the game, even if he doesn't go score in one tour, one three to play inside. Um, but equally, you know, there's a, there's a role to be there outside as well, and, you know, uh, be a centre forward or wing forward and kind of going the same way like you know that these are all these guys have the ability to interchange in and out so that's kind of the story I'd be it's, it's, it's the one sector of the field where there isn't massive question marks I mean even um, even just coming like you know has he done enough to start I mean no was the answer based on the Dublin performance but is he going to start yes I mean he, he is um, and it's probably it's going to be in that same position um, but you would just be expecting if he, if we're hoping that we we he can reproduce the form shown, obviously for the last number of years. Um, and if he does, then he's he yeah, obviously has an awful lot to offer in, in that sector. So I don't think an awful lot to talk about really in, in terms of the attack. I mean, Ireland will come in. I'd be I'd be shocked again if he, if he, I don't know I was I was quite shocked the last day he didn't start. I know, but um, I I would be shocked if he doesn't start this week. And then the other fellas, as you say. I mean, the Nile Brook one is, is, is quite interesting, I think, this year because, you know, in previous years, if Nile Brook's been left to the bench, I wouldn't really have battled Nile because I I never felt he, he did it. But, I mean, I thought I thought he'd, he'd the best league he's had in a long time Yeah, this year without actually seeing that many minutes. I thought his form deserved more minutes in the league, put it that way. Um, so, again, you know, I'd like to see him as a kind of a 25-minute man and not a... 10 minute man the next day like you know because you know coming into a game as a forward like the ball can just not go near you for five minutes without you doing anything wrong as well like you know so you do you do need that bit of time to impact the game so you know he's probably the standout option to come in then uh, uh, apart from the ones we've listed to start but I, I do I think forward you know if there's a need for it obviously you know if things are flying at 25 minutes to go there's, there's no point obviously changing things but if there's a need for a change you'd like to see the change being made and not be delaying to seven or eight minutes from the end when the forward probably doesn't have a, really have a chance to impact the game you know um, mm. so yeah that's that's the way we're looking at it anyhow and again like I say I think compared to the other sectors of the field it's probably, it's probably the one where there isn't as much to discuss or debate because most of us are kind of nailed on really aren't they yeah, pretty much. Like, and I think uh, I for, for me picking just as good at six. I don't think he'll ever play there. So I'd agree yeah. with you. And I think there is a role from there to to maybe he could be the man detail for Caelan Lyons at the weekend with Nyland centre forward. It's a four man half forward like Connor Cooney and uh, Whelan would be would, would be kind of linkmen in between. You know what I mean? They can yeah. they can interchange and float in and out. That would be what I would go. I would go with Canning and Cannon inside. Um, I just yeah. think. I think we have to try and get the most out of Kenning at this point. I I think I think that's where he could do the most damage. And we saw uh, we saw the damage that Kincannon did against Waterford in the league as well. He's devastating. Now we're going to need Kincannon to be you know you highlighted it as well that you know out in front of his man, winning position, not ten yards behind Keno Callahan like he was in Dublin. We want him out in front, securing position, take getting the ball in hand and taking on his man and you know heading for heading tipping over points and heading for heading for goal if the opportunity arises. Um, but yeah, I I agree. I don't think there's much. I think Nile Burke one would be if I was to go with with just Cooney at centre back. I would be Nile Burke would be the one who would be coming in to start for me as well. Um, I yeah, agree yeah. with you. I think he's at a, I think he's at a fine fine league. It's to no fault he's always not starting. But like when you see Evan Iden not starting and he's at an even better league, it'll tell you you know you you know the where 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 things kind of lie. I suppose other than that, maybe you know someone like. Jam Mannion's pace and a roast and hot day with you know 15 minutes from the end it might be worth the look yeah, as well you know possibly, yeah. if the if the game is in the melting pot you know just to, you know similar to Desi Hutchison it's the last thing you want to see in the searing heat coming on you know speedster coming on and giving you giving you a bit of a giving you a bit of a run around um, I suppose look at finally do you see kind of a, a tight game playing out I think we said it already I don't see more than a scoring I think it's call we need to deliver here now I think I think it's a game we need to, you know, really produce in. I think it'll be very, be devastating if if they were to go out on the back of two defeats in Championship after the league that they've had. Um, All Ireland wise, I, be honest, I don't see it as a runner given the the route to the final at the moment. I don't, I don't see us winning an All Ireland final given 
as you said, Waterford to tip Limerick, Kilkenny in a five week spell, I just don't think it's feasible. So, you know, I think, you know, beat Waterford, beat Tipperary, have a coat at Limerick, probably be mediocre sort of year um, at, the, at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's similar. Yeah, that's kind of how, how, how I see it playing. So I see, I do see a tight game just again. Um, and I see two teams going out and giving good accounts of themselves. Like, you know, I think there's pressure on both for one. I, th- I think both will, to be honest. And I do. And I think, I do. I think if both teams perform to their their best, I mean, I think we're I think we're a better side. Um, you know, no question about it. But whether we can get back to that level that's required and, you know, even the level we showed last year in championship, that that near, probably nearly be good enough to win to win this game. It won't be good enough to win win all Ireland or anything like that. But I mean, it's about getting kind of getting a bit of positivity going again, getting back on the road, you know, getting a win under the belt, um, and that'll breed 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 big confidence going into the another Ireland quarter final. Like you know, um, whether that's that's enough for for a finish, you know, down down the road five weeks time, hard to know, but. I mean, all we can worry about for now is this weekend's game and getting the performance back to the level required and the level that players are capable of. Like, you know, it's not, you're not asking for players to do something that they're just not good enough to do. Like, you know, we, we know yeah. that it, it, it's in them. So, um, just a case of going out and enjoying the game and I guess trying to, you know, right the wrongs of the of the Dublin game and doing, giving the performance that the players themselves and the and supporters that are going to be get, getting going for the start that, that they can be proud of like you know and if we do that you'd, you'd like to think that God probably will have enough to, to, to share it you know I hope you're right anyway Lucas we'll be back again next week as as usual um, we're reflecting on hopefully a win hopefully it's not the the, the last show <laughs> um, yeah. so please please God so um, yeah look at we'll, we'll leave it there Patrick thanks thanks as always for your time and you look at we'll probably be chatting maybe early next week maybe Monday or Tuesday we might get the show out again so depending on how things how things play out so look at God have a boo and please God we're, we're staring in at a, a, a quarter final game against Tipperary you know, a few days later um, yeah we'll leave it there thanks a million